I'd like to call to order the Town of McCandless um, Town Meeting for July 12th, 2021. The Pledge of Allegiance will be led by Council Member Sponsors. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America, 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 to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under God, God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, let's start out with um, some this evening's announcements. Um, first of all, I want to let everyone know that the Outdoor Fitness Clinic will be July 17th from 8 to 10 at UPMC Center for Rehabilitation and Sports Medicine will be conducting uh, that clinic. There will be a warm-up and um, proper demonstration of proper use of the equipment at our fitness court. And there will also be flexibility and stability screening and snacks and water. So I think that's gonna be a very nice event. The Heritage Center is putting on a program, the History of Radio, that's July 15th at 7 p.m. And Jim Howler is going to be um, conducting that presentation. The McCandless Police Department is sponsoring their first national night out. That is gonna be August 3rd, five till 8 p.m. That's gonna be a town hall with the purpose to enhance partnership with first responders. You, if you're unable to attend, or if you are able to attend, you can show your support for first responders that evening by turning on your porch light. There will be safety checks for kids' bikes and helmets, free hot dogs, and giveaways. Bob FM will be there, and at dusk, there will be a movie in the park. Um, you may notice things uh, being a little different this evening. We are uh, trying out a new format, uh, a um, meeting format trying to streamline, cut out some of the repetition as things have changed over the years and uh, better organize our meetings. It should help citizens be able to more easily target um, which meetings are, um, where their interests are, so that they will know when to attend. Also be more respectful of our um, staff's time. All right, um, we have, a couple of awards this evening. This is one of my favorite things, my favorite parts. Could I please have Ms. Dawn Miller please come forward? Stand here facing this way, so how we figured out it works. Okay. All right. Um, Ms. Dawn Miller has been nominated for our um, Citizen Recognition Award. Uh, Dawn is a member of the Litter Subcommittee. She and her family participate in the spring and fall town litter cleanups. Uh, Dawn also helps help write the temporary sign ordinance as another way of helping to keep our community clean and beautiful. Dawn helped to organize and is a member of the Northern Area Environmental Council and serves as a Penn State Extension Master Watershed Steward Coordinator. <laughs> so it is with a great pleasure, Dawn, and I've had just the privilege of, of knowing you some in the EAC, it, to present this award to you that says, while this award is proudly presented to Dawn Miller in recognition of your commitment and passion for keeping the town beautiful and litter free as well as for assisting with the development of its sign ordinance and many other projects. Would you please open up the audio and visual for our junior council member. Oh, your mic is still off. So um, Raj, I'm glad you could make it this evening. We, um, it is the end of your term, 
two terms, and in fact, as our junior council member, um, you didn't get enough with one that you applied twice. So um, it must not have been too, too arduous. Um, we wanted to give you a letter of accommodation so that you have um, something in appreciation for the work that you have done for the town of McCandless to carry with you on wherever life takes you um, in the future. So this will be given to you. Um, but first of all, I want to um, tell everyone that um, you've not only come to the meetings and given us your ideas and summarized the things that have the um, topics that have come before council, but you actually brought your own unique ideas, um, which is why we, um, one of the reasons that we want to get youth, um, younger people involved in, um, in, in our meetings. Um, your ideas involve the beginning an Instagram account, which you've been helping manage with, I think John Burjowski is helping you. Um, it's so that this is the first time the town has ever had that, to try to identify and reach out to some um, younger, members of our community, um, as well as the um, tennis clinic that you're currently organizing because you're a big tennis player on our soon to be um, freshly refinished tennis courts down here behind um, the town hall, as well as the blood drive that um, is gonna be occurring in Wexford. So um, let me read to you your letter um, of accommodation. It says, dear Mr. Gindy, the town of McCandless would like to recognize you for your consistent effort and hard work as the town of McCandless junior council member for the years 20, 21, and we can add 19 to 20 in there also. You have been a valued partner to both town council and town administration. You have prepared insightful monthly reports for town council and have lent the valuable perspective of young adults to the governance of our town. During your town, time in this role, you have led many innovative community building initiatives, such as a blood drive, the town Instagram account, and a planned a tennis clinic for novice players. You have achieved in your, in your two years as junior council member, what all who serve in government hope to. You have made a difference in your community. On behalf of town council, the staff, and all citizens of McCandless, we wish you well in your future endeavors we know you'll be successful in your attempts. We'll um, either mail this to you or work out for you to come and pick it up. I can, come back. I can come and pick it up sometime, no problem. Okay, is there anything you want to say? Uh, I, yeah, I'd just like to thank everyone. It's been um, a heck of a year, especially with the pandemic and, you know, so much change, but it's definitely been one memorable, especially for me and getting to know all of you has been awesome. You guys are great people. I just would like you I would like to thank you for being part of this awesome community. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I think that's all that we have um, for announcements. Today, um, next is um, council members have the minutes for the meeting of June 28th, 2021. Were there any changes or amendments to the meet to these minutes? Um, I had a change on page five. I would like um, um, the probably halfway down the page, everything after stated. And I can write this up. Um, it was a statement um, that was documented by me that was um, incorrectly stated. I'd like to have that uh, taken off the record, taken out of the minutes. Um, minutes are really supposed to be an official record of um, actions and attendees and direct statements um, can be um, misunderstood because they're just little snippets of them. So that, um, it, and uh, that isn't even what the statement was. So I'd like to have that taken out um, completely. Uh, yes, everything after stated uh, can come out. And if you, either the whole thing can be left out or if you wanted to add a better representation of actually what was uh, said was 
or what I said was support a public education program on the hazards of coal tar instead of legislation. Thank you. Um, were there any other changes? Madam President. Council Member Woods. Uh, on that same topic, there was a motion made by Council Member Sponholtz. I made the second to adopt the resolution. It's not listed in the minutes. Thank you. Any other comments? Is there a motion to accept the minutes as amended? So moved. Okay, Council Member Sponholz has made the motion. Is there a second? Council Member Smith. There's been a motion and a second. All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Um, and if um, our members who are, which are the majority of our members who are participating uh, by Zoom, if you please would just raise your hand, it's just so hard to, uh, to decipher your voices. So I, I can make sure that everything is accurate. I do want everyone to know that we have a full complement of council here and attending this meeting, um, several people on vacation, but just not, their bodies are not here. They are here. That. All right. Um, so that passed unanimously. All right. The next we have a public hearing on the firefighters real estate tax credit. I'll be happy to. I also wanted to mention that if anybody who is presently public can certainly speak, and anybody via Zoom who wants to speak to this, please enter your name and address in the chat box Thank you. so that we can be aware of your desire to speak. Um, council's been discussing this topic for a number of months. Uh, we have received uh, requests over time for consideration of some additional volunteer credits for those members of the volunteer fire service who are no longer employed but still active in their various companies um, for those of you in attendance that aren't aware the town does offer a credit on earned income tax to volunteers who meet criteria for service and the intent of this ordinance is to provide also a real estate tax credit for those members of the service who are not uh, employed any longer, they're retired. So the maximum credit that a volunteer could receive under this part of the program will be $300. Uh, it will be credited back, paid back as a refund in their real estate tax. Otherwise, it will be handled. The criteria remains the same for real estate taxes it did for earning. So they still have to meet the number of hours of service in order to get those questions from council. All right, is there anyone um, that would like to speak from the public on this matter? If you have public comment about everything else that will be after this public hearing. But if anyone who wants to speak about this particular issue, this is the time. So if you want to speak- No, you mean the, the firefighters? Yes. No, no. Okay. General comment will be after this public hearing of this is over. Just want to make sure. Is I, there- I believe that they deserve everything they get. If you would like to come up to- no, that's okay. You're just throwing it in free. Just a bonus comment there. Um, is there anyone who is here by Zoom that is signed up in the chat box that would like to make a comment? All right, I'm going to ask again, just in case we give somebody some time, because it is a public hearing. I want to make sure everybody would have time if they wanted to say anything. Any council member that has anything? We were not voting on this tonight. This is a, this is a public hearing to hear of the public news. 
Again, any public that are present would like to speak? Any members on Zoom? Okay. Hearing none, we will close the public hearing. All right, uh, the public hearing on the firefighters real estate uh, tax credit. And we'll plan on voting on that in the next meeting. Yes. 27? Is it 27? Yes. 27. Yeah. 26. Thank you. All right. Now, next is public comment on any agenda item or any general comment. All right. Please come to the microphone and say your name and your address, please. My name is Joseph Markle, my floor 99 Catherine Drive, the Camus. Uh, you're going to come up with an ordinance tonight, two of them actually, which don't have a lot of input on it. And normally, for I've been coming here for 30 years, and any kind of ordinance that ever come up, the public always had a comment at the time as the ordinance was being presented. But seeing the format's been changed, where the public has to speak before they even know what's going on, that's at a disadvantage to the public. But anyways, that being said, I know the chicken awareness what I'm talking about. Uh, we live in uh, a township that we as digest says it was one of the best in the United States. It was an all one for the most part. And now you want to make it a farming community, livestock. It's going to be, and what's the percentage of people? A handful of uh, people that want to raise chickens have no knowledge of it. And the bottom line is, uh, the vast majority of them are looking for their property to be nice. And you're bringing in livestock. And, and the question is, like, you know, chickens need daily feeding and all that sort of thing. They make a lot of noise. The roosters crow all the time. Every time a hen lays an, or lays an egg, the whole bunch hawks and makes all kind of noise. They are prey to animals, coyotes, foxes, raccoons. We need that coming in the canvas, huh? Owls, eagles, hawks, and there's an, a host of other delights, bugs, lice, mites, tight, uh, ticks, worms, a lot of health concerns. It can be destructive machines, destroying everything. Well, that's going to really make our neighborhoods really, you know, really nice, so to somebody wants to purchase or live in McCandless, you know, I mean, we ain't in uh, Butler or Mercer County. Backyard chickens are very expensive. You know, the ones in the supermarket are subsidized by the government. A lot cheaper. You know, there's going to always be neighbors and complaints. Who's going to take care of them when they're on vacation? Who's going to be the pet sitter? You got to be knowledgeable. Then there's the poop and more poop and so forth. And who's going to inspect this? You know, the code officer don't inspect now. You ain't allowed lot of one dwelling on a property. People got house trailers. How do you get away with that? You know, they have storage places, and that's all full of house trailers, boats. The canvas don't do nothing. Got a lady in a certain uh, district off Grubbs Road, puts a toilet on the front of her property. Instead of passing an ordinance about that, worried about chickens you know you got to guard your flock day and night you need a chicken coop who's going to inspect this you don't even inspect nothing now fire pits you know allegheny county is an air pollution county you need a lot of open burn you need permission for the fire chief 24 hours prior but they burn all over the place can't open your windows for the smoke you know Backyard poultry carry harmful germs. If they make a sal salmonella, dogs can catch that off the feces. In 2017, Washington Post, Center for Disease Control and, and Prevention, 1,120 cases of salmonella linked to backyard chickens. Vaccines. You know, vets ain't going to give vaccines. They give them to commercial because they got a whole bunch. Vets ain't going to take care of chickens in a residential area. Who's going to inspect all this stuff? You know, I live in McCandless for 30 years, and the reason people 
bought houses in the Kansas because it was run on a strict R1. And now you got a small handful of people want to raise chickens because they see something on the internet that is like, you know, they think, oh, it's cool because they're going to get fresh eggs. They're going to, you know, but my concern is who's going to enforce all this to health? Thank you very much. Thank you for your comment. Are there any other comments from citizens present? Yes. Okay. Present. Okay. I see that we have um, someone signed up in the chat box who would like to speak. Can you give the mic microphone request? Good evening, am I on? <laughs> you are, we can hear you, yes, please. Okay, uh, and is my video visible? Yes, it is, okay. Thank you very much um, for allowing me to speak. Uh, I was reading over the agenda items and I saw that um, tonight will be a discussion about limiting the sidewalk, uh, having a variance, if that's a correct term, for the development on Thompson Run Road. Uh, and as I went down the agenda, I did see the comment by the gateway engineers regarding that sidewalk. Um, the pages are not, oh yeah, page three of four, um, general comment one, section B, uh, to waive the requirement for a sidewalk along Thompson Run Road from the site driveway and south. I'm not exactly sure how that would um, run, but I think that, there was already a variance given for that area because of the cemetery and uh, did not want to have a sidewalk on their side of Thompson Run Road. And the reason given there, and as I recall, was that it was too expensive. And now the reasoning is that the topography along the roadway is very steep and no other sidewalks currently uh, exist on the adjoining properties. Um, I feel this is a very weak argument for not installing a sidewalk. Uh, as you know, as you might recall, I was part of the implementable planning uh, committee and um, connectivity was a very important part of the implementable plan. And I think uh, it was always stated that, oh, well, when we need a sidewalk, we'll, we'll put one in. Well, we need sidewalks. Uh, we don't have any on Thompson Run Road as, I, as far as I know. And I've seen children walking to the pool on Thompson Run Road at McCann the McCandless Pool. I see adults walking there. That is a very, um, that intersection needs to be managed a little bit better as well. And sidewalks would really help. So each time a sidewalk is not installed, we, run, we do run the risk of injury to pedestrians and limiting the connectivity to our community members. So I hope that they, I've seen this over and over again, that the reasoning given is that um, the topography is limiting. Then I ride through other communities such as Pine Township and I see hillsides with sidewalks cut in. There is an engineering way to do this. Um, this is a very weak argument. And I think it's time that as they did over at um, the Divine Providence Mother House, they find a, found a way to do that little path um, on Babcock Boulevard. So I think we need to raise the bar here and start thinking of our residents. Thank you very much for listening. And uh, I also wanted to comment, I read the police report and I was very impressed with all the items that were listed there that uh, Chief Hawk is having the officers take part in. Thank you and that's all I have to say right now. Thank you for your comment. Are there any other individuals signed up on Zoom to speak? No, there are not. Okay. All right, then we will move on to reports from committees. 
Um, and this is where our agenda is a little bit different. Um, under the report, the Public Safety Committee, the uh, chair of the Public Safety Committee will um, go down and call for these reports. So that would be you, Councilmember Swagger. Okay, first we have the Chief's report. I believe Ryan's on here. Um, does anyone have any questions or anything, comments for Ryan? No questions, no comments. Okay, next we have fire marshal's report for the month of May, 2021 and permit report for June, 2021. Is Dan there? Any questions, Dan comments for Dan? He's here. Okay. Any questions, comments? Nope. Uh, next, we have code enforcement violations complaint statistics report for the month of June 2021. Questions, comments for that? Um, I, I did have um, something. I've had a couple of people um, talk to me about right now, anyone that has a pool, and I, there's, I saw lots of permits for pools, that's why I'm bringing this up, you know, has to have a fence, right? That's our, but apparently the new pool covers that they have are actually supposed to be safer than fences because you can scale the fences, but once these pool covers close, they say you can even drive a car on them and that they're much safer. So that may be something for us to look at maybe changing our ordinance and you flip a switch like a light switch and it just goes, it closes over. So the pool is really closed. Um, plus it may just look a lot nicer not to have that, you know, that big fence up, but it may be something for us to think about adding. Um, is, is that something that maybe council would be interested in looking at, seeing about maybe adding something like that to our ordinance? Or at least looking and yeah. seeing if that's really true, that it's, um, it's done everyone. Okay. I think, yeah, I think, uh, me. Yeah, I think at the, oh. Who's, I can't tell who's speaking. I think it's no one. Oh. Council Member Smith, are you trying to speak? <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's all I was trying to say was, uh, you know, I'd definitely be interested in hearing more about it. Um, and at the very least, considering it as an alternative to a fence. You know, if, if we decide it's a good idea, it doesn't mean we have to get rid of fences and right. and switch to covers, but offering it as an alternative as as something else that pool owners could do uh, in lieu of a fence, um, you know, particularly, I'd be interested in in anything like that. Thanks. Yeah, and like I said, I've, I've heard they're even safer than fences. So I, it might be worth looking, uh, kind of updating that little um, section there. All right, thank you. That was my only uh, comment about permits. Okay, uh, next up is the personnel board. Uh, we actually haven't had a meeting since our last update. Um, I mean, I know we're trying to plan one soon, so Hopefully there'll be an update for the next meeting or two out. Um, the Volunteer Firefighter Steering Committee, last meeting was May 19th. We do not have one scheduled as of now, but we will hopefully have a new date soon. Uh, please community engagement ad hoc committee. Um, nothing really new since the last time. Ryan, do you have anything to add? I don't know if you're able to speak here about this. Can you hear me, folks? Yes. Uh, we just continue. I would uh, remind everyone of National Night Out. We're trying to, we continue to plan it, uh, put uh, things in motion, and uh, want it to be a, uh, you know, a success for the, for the town, community members in the police department, uh, other first responders that uh, we hope are there with us that evening. And uh, uh, that's what we're into right now. Thank you, Ryan. Yes, ma'am. And that concludes my public safety committee part of the meeting. So, I was just if I, go ahead. One thing I wanted to do publicly uh, this evening is to thank Dan Stack for his years of service with the town. Did I jump on? No, no, I was trying to, I was just trying to remember what we focused on. <laughs> okay. Um, just like to thank Dan for his service to the town. 
uh, 27 years, I got it right. And uh, you will be missed and we wish you all the well, all the luck in the new position. Um, next is facilities management, which was a new category that we added before we had five committee, um, general committees, and now we have six. So that would allow each council member to be in charge um, of a committee. But since we have not um, had this before, and since all of the things in here are I need to put it by Angela. Angela would be a good choice. You think? I okay. Think um, Council Member <laughs> Woods, would you like to be the chair of this committee? <laughs> I'd be honored, Madam President. <laughs> Thank you. Not to put you on the spot in front of every. I'm sitting here thinking, we didn't assign this. Exactly. What's up? Thank you for stepping up, Council Member Woods. All um, right. Pleasure. Thank okay. You. <laughs> so to begin the report, we have the public works activity report, which was included in everybody's packet. If you have any questions, I could see that Mr. Shaneman was in the building today. Just want to point out that the storm cleanup is complete. And despite all the extra effort that the uh, Department of Public Works had to put into that, the paving program is still on target. Um, Jeff, did you have anything you wanted to add? Yeah, but if anybody has any questions, even later on, too. Um, Jeff, I loved all the goals that you sent to council about the direction that you want public works to go forward with. I love your vision and direction, and I was just impressed over the top with that. So thank you so much. That would, they were really good, really good. Okay. Number two, the Environmental Advisory Committee. Councilwoman Sponholt. Uh, thank you. Uh, because we are now changing this agenda, we actually submitted the minutes for the last EAC meeting in the last meeting. Um, so I have nothing new for you today since our, our, we will be having a meeting on Wednesday night. But if anyone has any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Once we get on this cycle, then it will be right, we think. Okay. Very good. Next up is the Technology Advisory Committee, and that's me. So your um, the minutes were included in your packets. I'm saying that out loud. Now I'm thinking that they weren't. No, we just had ours last week. We had the meeting. These were, were, were on the similar schedule as uh, EAC. I apologize. We're going to be a little bit behind on that. We did have several applicants for the open positions, and we'll get to that a little bit later this evening. <clears throat> uh, number four, the Stormwater Management Ad Hoc Committee. Again, Councilwoman Sponholtz. Uh, thank you. Um, we did give an update at the last town council meeting, um, but I, did, I just wanted to point out a couple of things. Um, our automated stormwater issue reporting, I believe is up and operating on the town website. Um, we obviously know some of the significant areas of repetitive flooding in town, but we are we want to have an inventory of any areas in the town that are um, repeatedly experiencing uh, flooding events. Um, and in addition, I just remind everyone, especially in light of the recent storms, um, that the town continues to preemptively pursue stormwater mitigation projects including a potential pro uh, project on donated uh, land on Pine Creek. Um, there are holistic watershed projects um, with accompanying grant applications to the North Hills COG. Um, we are continuing the ongoing efforts to inspect, maintain inventory, um, and upgrade or make upgrade assessments on the town's stormwater management and detention facilities. And we have two upcoming meetings, um, which I believe uh, Mr. Grimm is going to be a leader in with the Army Corps of Engineers. 
um, to look at some of the most significant um, areas of flooding that we've experienced in the town. And those meetings will be held on the 4th of August, followed by a on-site site visit on August 10th. And that concludes my report. Thank you very much. And that concludes the report for the Facilities Management Committee. All right, Services Committee. Then her name is not on there, but that's Council Member Sponholz. Uh, the latest information um, was included in the. Um, I'm, so, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm the, I'm the service. I apologize, Council Member Smith. Would you like to tell us about the um, Sanitary Authority? Sure. The uh, meeting minutes for the most recent meeting are in your packet. And if you have any questions, let me know. Okay, hearing none. Um, now I will move to the ambulance authority. Um, all of the latest information um, from um, was included in council's packet at the last meeting. And Again, Council Member Smith, um, the Library Authority. Uh, yep, no new information because of the timing. Uh, the information was in the last meeting's packet. So from here on out, it'll, it'll be on schedule, but there's no new information since the, the last meeting. That concludes the uh, Services Committee report. All right. All right, moving on to old business. Um, council is considering the ordinance 1514, the ordinance of McCandless, um, amending the codified ordinances part seven to regulate the keeping of chickens. Now, I, I hope I, I wanna, either Bob can jump in here or I can try to explain. Oh, there's RJ, Hi. like magic. Um, <laughs> RJ, t tell everyone why we have two separate things that we're adopting here. Yeah, so um, if we take a really, really brief trip down memory lane oh, to before, RJ, it's two several years. of us were two actually years. here. Um, yeah, as you say, two years, I think that this has been in the making. It, once upon a time, it was paired with a household pets and dog and kennel ordinance. Um, we split those two issues so they could be considered and discussed separately. Uh, subsequently, we were taking a look uh, with you know the new town attorney's office there and zoning specialist there, uh, and it was determined you know, originally everything was in the zoning ordinance essentially, but there were some regulations such as um, you know the the sanitary conditions of the coop, um, the aesthetics of it, making sure that all of the materials outside are of good quality and in harmony with the surrounding area. Those things were better suited for the property maintenance and general nuisances. Uh, set of ordinances, which are the 700s code versus the 1300s, which is zoning. Um, so essentially we split those, you know, it's, it's still all the same regulations for the most part, um, but just putting them in the more appropriate buckets for enforcement. Um, the first one that you've got up today is the general offenses and general nuisances code. Uh, I can give just a real quick overview of that and some of the discussion of the um, the different options that you have for how we do the permitting here, which should have been in your meeting packets. Um, so is that okay? Sure. Okay. All right. So um, essentially for this, this first ordinance, you know, this deals mostly, like I said, with more of the health, the sanitation, um, those types of issues. The care of the chickens is that one particular heading. Uh, chicken coops and runs, you know, shade and warm weather, adequately fenced, all of those things. Those all go together with those property maintenance issues that could come up um, with backyard chicken ownership. Uh, the first section that I wanted to draw your attention to is the certificate of approval section in the current draft. Um, so I think originally when this was being drafted and it's kind of moved through the process this way, there was a suggestion that we do an annual um, licensing and reinspection of the coops. Uh, depending on whether that's something that the council wants to stick with, there are some different considerations administratively um, that we'd have to work out depending on you know, setting an annual licensing fee, uh, some of the considerations for an annual inspection, um, all of those things. So that's the sheet they had in your packets, um, option one, two, and three was essentially discussing the different ways that you could do a COOP certificate of approval. Um, 
And under the section, you'll see in option one, that's sort of as the ordinance is written. Um, that there are some challenges listed under there, essentially, you know, depending on whether you do these inspections at the same time annually, or you try to track, you know, exactly when each permit expires annually. There's going to be a different workload of inspections um, and on staff time that would be, you know, kind of difficult to recoup, I think, um, with, with a fee that's a little more uh, easy to stomach, I would say, annually for the residents. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions about what was in that sheet, but, you know, overall, um, the second option on there would be suggesting essentially to retain all of those same regulations, but it eliminates some of the administrative challenges um, that come with trying to do an annual re-inspection that, you know, might not catch some of those issues that we're really concerned about because the person that owns the chickens and potentially is violating the ordinances knows that we're coming. Um, and it would probably not be terribly difficult to clean up those violations and, you know, get your renewal. Um, whereas sort of, if there's a nuisance in the neighborhood, we're probably not going to find out about it just at the annual inspection. That's probably something that's going to get flagged to code enforcement um, pretty far in advance of that inspection. So just some different information um, about costs, you know, benefits and cons of each approach, staff time that would be allotted for each approach. Um, essentially taking a look at either option two or option three in there with just a couple quick changes to that certificate of approval section, the ordinance could still move forward. Um, but again, I'm happy to answer any questions that anyone has about how that permitting might work um, in advance of the nuisance ordinance vote. Do we need to understand that process in order to make a move on this motion? Uh, well, so if, if as it's written, it's adopted, as is, there are some decisions that council needs to make in advance of, you know, updating the fee schedule resolution. Um, for example, we would need to set an annual inspection fee. My suggestion in this is if we do move forward with the annual inspection, that we wouldn't set it at lower than $50, just because that's actually probably less than the staff time that it would take to administer the inspection annually per permit. Um, council should probably also give us guidance as to whether they would want the permits to expire on a calendar year basis versus, you know, what day essentially they were approved throughout the year and then individually tracking each of those dates. Again, there's, you know, pros and cons um, to each way that, you know, you could do that. Um, I think their current software might have some challenges in tracking the individual dates, but at the same time, if the program is popular, um, ballparking maybe about an hour of staff time that could be spent per inspection you know, we're, if it's a popular program, we're quickly backing up past January just to do those inspections annually with our current staffing. Um, so we would need some sort of indication as to which way council would prefer um, if we were to move with, forward with the annual inspections. Um, the last consideration on that is, do you want to offer a reduced second year rate if you have somebody apply beyond a certain point in the calendar year, if um, you were to do the permits all expiring at the same time. Those are just some of the different things that we'd have to figure out in infrastructure to, to track and maintain in the office. <clears throat> so my looking at this, the bottom line that I'm hearing is option one is an annual recertification and how are we going to do it? Or option two is an initial certification and no other certification. Right. That would okay. be just responding to code enforcement complaints. Essentially. Okay. Okay. So is there anything in between? It would be like maybe a five year. Well, that's certainly something that, I mean, that would, that would be a small change to the existing ordinance right now, section 1B. Um, I should say the existing draft, excuse me, because this isn't on the books yet. Section 1B says the certificate shall expire autom automatically one year after issuance. We certainly could change that to a different number of years. Again, there would be a tracking challenge just because right now the best we've got is an Outlook calendar out alert <laughs> for those dates. But I mean, it, you know, we've got five years potentially to figure out a better system, right? Is there um, any other structure that we annually charge to inspect? Any garages, any sheds, any dog houses, no. any barns, any anything? Uh, unless there's something under the fire regulations that I don't know about. So no. For the zoning only counts, thing no. in McCandless that would require an annual inspection would be chicken coops? Off the top of my head, yes. There's nothing else that I do annually 
on a permit basis. That doesn't sound right. That doesn't sound reasonable. To, you mean to, to just- For it to, to be the only I thing. I see what you're saying, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, option two would be my recommendation just for the administrative you know, considerations, yeah. as yeah. well as, again, is that gonna be the venue in which we catch those nuisances? Probably yeah. not. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think option one is um, excessive. Um, so I would think option two would be um, more reasonable. Um, and we don't even do five-year inspections on anyone's shed, do we? Or anyone's no. porch or garage or anything. Correct. Once you've got a zoning permit, you've got <laughs> your zoning done. permit. Okay. okay. Um, and then so, but if anyone made any complaints, and of course you would respond to that. Yes, yes absolutely. That would be right. Yep. Okay. All right. Um, I think I think uh, option two sounds reasonable. I, I did want to call everyone's attention to you know whether it's one, two, or three. The the base fee that we would be recommending at this time is fifty dollars for a ch chicken coop accessory structures permit. Um, that's pretty much in line with some of our other accessory structures. For example, if you have a garage or a larger shed, that's fifty dollars for the review because um, our regulations do require partially in the zoning, partially in the property maintenance code section, um, screening or fencing so that basically you can't see the coop from the street or from other neighbors. You would probably need to put up some sort of fence if you don't already have one. So the $50 fee would actually be basically a discount on the garage shed type larger accessory structures and would also incorporate review of any fencing that was required. Fence permits on their own are $25. So essentially, if we could do that single accessory structure permit fee, which again, you know, that could be adopted in fee resolution um, for all the options, we would ultimately be giving a little bit of a discount for combining the review of those two. And you're there already, looking at it anyway. Oh yeah, it, right. exactly, right. exactly. Right. Yeah, that, right. I mean that would, it's it's just easier than having to have somebody submit a separate fence right. permit right. and all of that stuff. Agreed. 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 Yeah. Council members, uh, Council Member Smith. Um, yeah. So for for the, the second and third options, we're just looking at a one-time fee, and then essentially that permit is good in perpetuity? Uh, as, as the suggested options are written, yes. Is there a way, I mean, could, could we do an annual fee just without the inspection component just to make sure that the folks who have the chicken coops are invested in them? You know, so that it's somebody doesn't start one year one, give up on it in month eight, uh, halfway, but then they have kind of a, you know, we have to wait for a resident complaint on a nuisance for it, that kind of thing. You know, kind, kind right. of as an incentive to, like, it wouldn't have to be big because we wouldn't be reinspecting it. It would just be kind of an annual renewal for the for the license. Yeah, so um, there, there are a couple communities that I'm aware of that do something like that. It's definitely not unheard of. Um, it, you could certainly bring you know the fee down because looking at the annual fee when we were you know suggesting fifty dollars, that would still essentially be subsidizing some of the services for um, the the annual reinspection. Now, with an annual fee, there is still the administration, the determination of do you want to have them all expire on the calendar year or do you want them to be on the individual date? And there's still the administrative challenges for you know having each one on the individual date. It would certainly cut down on the administration um, of the annual inspections, which is probably the biggest staff time challenge. Um, but I, I would need to take suggestions for what exactly that annual fee might might be um, and, if there's an inspection called. And would that be something that could be done through the fee schedules as opposed, so it, if we adopted something tonight and it said whatever it said, and then we decided, okay, we want, you know, we want there to be an annual renewal fee, but not inspections. Would that be something that we could just do through kind of the fee schedules or would that require more public hearing and a whole uh, ordinance amendment? Well, so for since we're specifically talking about the general offenses and nuisances code, um, there's a little bit of a different requirement for the different types of ordinances. Zoning ordinances have the most stringent um, public hearing and passage procedures. So we've had at least a couple public hearings now on the zoning portion. Um, of course, they've been duly advertised that they were being considered tonight. However, the public nuisance 
um, piece of the ordinance is. That's what we consider, I believe, a Class C ordinance under our town charter, which means that you only have to put out there a notice of intent to adopt. You don't have to have a full public hearing, you know, if there's an edit to the ordinance. And I wouldn't consider the certificate approval edits to be really material changes unless the town attorney has a different opinion. <laughs> No, I, I think they're fine. If we're removing, it'd be different if we were adding. Yeah, so so no, essentially no new regulation would be added through any of the options we're discussing. We would either be relaxing the, you know, the inspection frequency um, or, you know, removing the annual inspection. That would still require some minor edits to the draft. But again, unless the town attorney has any issues, I think it would be fine to make a motion to, you know, incorporate whatever amendments the group felt appropriate to the draft. Council Member Woods. Um, RJ, the $50 that you mentioned, if we went with option two, does that cover the administrative costs without any subsidy? Essentially, I mean, it, it, it always depends on, you know, precisely the individual applications. But yeah, that's, I, I've got their ballparked about an hour and a half um, of staff time per permit to process review issue the actual permit um again just depending on the exact staff members that get their hands on that that pretty much should cover you know the the actual administrative cost um and no further thank you other comments by council i i would not support an annual it would amount to a chicken tax if you weren't inspecting it to just charge people every year fifty dollars to have chickens. I, I I don't I think the inspection, whatever the inspection costs, should be what the charge is initially to make sure that they're compliant with the chicken runs and the setbacks and all those things. But I wouldn't support just an annual chicken charge for no work. Oh yeah, Councilmember Smith. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, to be honest with you, I can't even believe that I was the one who who brought that up because that's <laughs> so. Not, you're but, a little little there when you're on so, well, so, but, so, so really, what my what my thought more was was to use it as tracking, and so could we even do it where you have to renew it, but there's not a fee. You just have to file something to say. Yes, I want to continue having chickens, essentially. We're using staff time. If we're using staff time, we need to compensate for that. Yeah. yeah. We yeah. don't have any other zoning permits or things like that that are really yeah, no we, charge. Yeah, we have to kind of treat everything fairly in, yeah. the, same, in the same. Yeah, because I, I was just thinking of it more as like a tracking mechanism and a oh, we see that this house had a coop last year and they didn't file for one again this year. You know, maybe somebody should just take a drive out in the next six months to see if it's falling apart or something like that. Um, not not from a raising money perspective. It was more just as a, as, as a tracking mechanism because we don't really have a good tracking mechanism at this point. Any other comments from council members? So our... RJ, first we would need to um, say which one of these options we wanted and then put that in this first one. Um, yeah, it would it would need to be addressed with the vote on um, the first motion. The first Mr. Corbell, I defer to you for how they should make the motion or, okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the motion is written yeah. here. You and just say just option, option one, two, or three? We would, well, I think we would, we would need to, do they need to incorporate the fact that there would be a couple of edits to this draft if they were to go with option two? Yeah, that's what I would say. Like, well, whichever option, then let's, I can help formulate the motion at that point and then somebody can follow on. If okay. there's a consensus as to the option that council would like to okay. proceed with. So I think I would like to call for a motion. Um, if there is a motion for this ordinance 1514 with option, and you would say option one, option two, or option three, and then our town solicitor is going to tell us what to do next. So do I, is there a motion? Councilmember Smith. Oh, oh, wait, I got to get the language for the motion in the first place. Okay, so, so, say, so, oh, okay. Option, just option one, two, or three. And I, would, I would move for option two. 
I, my motion would be for option two. Okay. All right. Do you need to tell us anything before we? No. I mean, is there a second? The is there a second? Right. For option two. And option two is the uh, council member Clunan. Yep. Okay, council member Smith, council member Clunan, and that is the option of the one time fifty dollar charge. It, if you don't mind, I probably should mention well, for the I, public benefit because we kind of glazed over it. Um, but option three still has the same charge as option two. It would just be not posting the certificate of approval on your coop. So, okay. So I'll, let me just clarify. You're not voting on the actual fee for the certificate tonight. Correct. That will be created through a fee resolution that will be passed later. So you're not, so that, that'll come from the administration. They'll make a recommendation once they sharpen their pencils as to what the fee is. What we're basically voting on in option two is removing um, the language in the draft ordinance that requires the annual renewal process and fee. So there will just be one single fee for your setup of the your chicken coop, for lack of a better term. But we're not saying what that is tonight yet. You will vote later, later. on an amended uh, okay. or restated fee resolution. Thank you for that clarification. You're welcome. Um, Council Member Smith, do you still make that motion? Yes. Okay, Council Member Clunan, do you still second that motion? Yes. All right. Is there any comments or questions from any council? Council Member Spahn, I'm still somewhat confused or saying it's putting the cart before the horse to be talking about what we're going to charge for it if we haven't even taken a vote and whether we want chickens in the first place. Well, that's correct. What we're asking for now is a motion to amend the draft ordinance, essentially, to remove the annual certificate. If you were to vote one way or the other on the motion as drafted, we would have to amend it later, is what my advice is, because we can pull sections out, but we can't add to the ordinance tonight. If you just don't want chickens, just say no to the whole thing. Because it's not just this little part; it's the whole. It's the whole yeah. thing with this yeah, yeah. part. Is it more? Is it what you're asking? Should we look at the zoning one first and then this one second? That's. It just seems to me that that makes a lot more sense. Yeah, because if you don't have the zoning, then you don't care. Yeah, you don't care what you do with this. I kind of see becomes that. moot. Watch. <laughs> <laughs> me, you put, I mean, that's how it was put on the agenda. I thought that, that was, that was that, honestly, that was just how it was provided yeah. for the advertisement, which I mean, I, I think there are definitely things that you want to take a look at in tandem. Um, it would make sense to vote the same way on both of them, probably. I think it's a valid point. And if you wanted to consider the zoning side sure. first, then someone could withdraw I, the motion or move someone should yeah. table because there's been a motion in a second. A quick That's question. A question. Mm -hmm. um, is, is, is there any similar provision to this fee in the zoning code? Because if not in the zoning code part of the ordinance, because because if not, I would agree. I would say let's do the zoning code first, because then we know whether or not we need to deal with the with the fee issue. The, well, so There's the, the fees would be essentially in, in again, just to be clear the what's in the information new packet those are just suggested user fees based on the actual staff time and administrative costs by no means are they a guarantee at this point and that's certainly something that will be voted on by council ultimately in the fee schedule resolution update um if there is a zone if the zoning component is passed you know whether or not the other one is passed there would still need to be a building and zoning permit i mean i guess you could issue them for free but that wouldn't be in keeping with the way that we handle other building and zoning permits. So essentially with both pieces, there is a fee component with the certificate of approval nuisance ordinance portion, which is what's on the table at the moment. There would be a certificate of approval annual renewal fee that would need to be discussed in the fee resolution. We're talking about something different. There, you would need a zoning permit, right? Because under the zoning ordinance, you're going to inspect for compliance with the zoning ordinance and there's a permit fee for that. Then secondarily, under the, the uh, animal regulation, the nuisance regulation, there would be a certificate of compliance for the provisions of that portion of the ordinance. And both would be one-time 
fees. Well, and if we would amend the second one, the animal ordinance. The so the certificate of compliance, that one would be the annual fee, not one time. Well, I mean, I suppose based Council on the discussion, yeah. correct. I mean, based yeah. on the discussion, we were talking about a one time under the Mr. Smith's motion. Oh, I, I see what you're saying. Option two. Yeah. But as drafted, it would require an annual as certificate well of compliance. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Option two would be the single one time fee recommended. Right. I guess what I'm saying is because option two requires an amendment to alter the language of the of the motion as or of the draft ordinance as written. If we can table that and decide the zoning motion first, I would agree with council members Sponholtz and Tarl to to do that first so that we don't even have to go down the fee schedule. You know, whether it's an annual or one time fee, we don't even have to dis discuss that until after we know if chickens are even going to be allowed, I guess. A little, little late for that. We've already done yeah. <laughs> the late. But um, would you somebody could make a motion to, to table, table it, it, but it can't be uh, Mr. Smith or uh, Ms. Clear. Madam President, yes, I move to table the motion. All right, second. all right, second. I, I don't think you have to have a second for a table. Do you? you do have to have a second, but they are not the motion table is not debatable, so there should be a vote immediately. There's it's not debatable. A motion to table is not all those debatable. in favor of tabling this motion, aye, aye, aye. opposed. Okay. Table. Did All we right. get a second for the tabling? Yes. yes. Okay. Mr. Tarl. Okay. If we are moving on to the zoning portion, I'm happy to answer any questions about that one. Councilmember Tarl. It's currently written of a, as a 50 foot setback from the side yard. Yes. From from all from all from property all. lines. Yeah. So this is not an exact science. Yeah. What percentage of households would roughly be allowed to have hoops with that 50 foot setback? I don't have that number off the top of my head. I'll You're be honest. Over the range. A third, a half. A half would be extremely generous. Okay. And if it was a hundred foot, how much would that? <laughs> Pretty much you'd have to have an estate lot. A more rural piece of property. Yes. Uh, yes. With the hundred foot setback. Correct. Councilmember Woods. Madam President, um, this is a question for the town attorney. At this point, if we were to change the setback distance, does that put us right back into having to re-advertise and do another public hearing for this? It does. It absolutely would. We start over, all the way over. Was there another comment? I thought I saw another hand. Uh, I have a question. Councilor Sponholz. RJ. Um, I think I know the answer to it. Okay. But, um, it was my opinion, it continues to be my opinion that we say that people want chickens in the candlest. And what I've seen in writing is a group of 45 people, 29 who wanted chickens and 16 didn't. And then another survey, and I think McCandless or Mc and me. Yeah, both were the, on. Yeah. the spotting right. of the chickens. And I still, I have to say that I, we have worked so hard on this as a council to try to find a happy median to what's right for our town. But I remain concerned that we have a town of 30,000-ish people and um, I don't know, I, I, I can't, from the conversations I have, mm -hmm. people I talk to don't want chickens. Yeah, so. And uh, so I, do uh, we have sorry. anything? No, that's my question. I said this months ago. Mm -hmm. do, we, do we have any better information that really, I mean, 45 people in a town of our size is not a great indicator of who wants what in our town. Yeah, so uh, I mean, I, I will say most of the information technically statistically is anecdotal. It's about 360 people for a statistically representative sample of a town of our size. Um, so unless we pull about 350 survey respondents, we're not gonna get a statistically representative sample on most things that we put on. 
um, you know, McCandless and me or any other public engagement site. Um, but, you you know, there, so there is no further more scientific, more yeah. statistically relevant information than yeah. 45 people. Without running an actual statistical model with demographics, I can't give a scientific result for that, for sure. Um, the anecdotal things that I can think of is, you know, there have definitely been people that have expressed concerns about noise, about odor, um, about whether or not chickens are even a thing that we should have in McCandless. Um, I'll throw out there, roosters are banned in this ordinance, so we at least would not be having those if this was passed. Um, that said, I've also had some people call me and basically say, if this chicken thing doesn't pass, I'm no longer interested in moving to McCandless, and so can you tell me if I can have chickens at my house? Um, so definitely there, there are a range of opinions on the whole backyard chicken thing. Um, I don't rec make a recommendation for or against, you know, this is just kind of what we came up with through the process. Um, I will say, I, I do have one more comment and that as I read the information that you provided for our, which I th thought was very well thought out by the way. Thanks. Um, I agree um, with the gentleman, Mr. Mark Markle. I agree with the comments he made earlier tonight about um, concern, and this is not about our enforcement effort, is the town is doing the best that it can. And unless we have, by the way, unless we have neighbors who are willing to report things, mm -hmm. no, we certainly don't have an enforcement staff capable of going and finding proactively issues. And um, I totally agree with President Zachary that we don't want to create a chicken tax. However, I do see that um, there are some real challenges. If we don't have maybe adequate staff today to do all the things we would love to do to enforce our ordinances, then, you know, and, and this could be a tricky one. And because of the administrative staff time, we don't want to spend, you know, nor I think we want you to spend, you and your staff spend innumerable hours on paperwork administratively or going out and looking at chicken coops. But I don't know how else to, it's all along, we've talked about how to properly do this in a way that wasn't going to create the nuisance that many residents are concerned about. So I'm just going on record as saying I'm concerned about the fact that we're, obviously we're not going to get back the money we're not, this program is not going to pay for itself, one. And two, unless somebody wants to raise taxes to hire more enforcement officials, then, you know, we're not going to have the capability to um, enforce the way this perhaps should be enforced. Yeah, I, I will say, I mean, especially the annual inspections, I mean, that's a staffing challenge for sure. Um, I think it's, it's a little more easy to stomach when it's not the annual inspections, but that is something that, you know, I, I recall through the process, that was something that was important to you, especially. Um, so, you know, there, there are definitely trade-offs to each, to each version of enforcement. Um, the certificate of approval thing is tough because it's good to see posted on that coop, you know, that sort of in, encourages responsible animal ownership. At the same time, if you have your coop screened correctly as per the zoning ordinance requires, probably won't be able to see that certificate from the street regardless. Um, and code enforcement, of course, can only enforce things that they see from a public place or the street unless they're giving permission actively to enter a property. Um, so, so it's tough to catch things that are happening in the backyard in general without some sort of photographic you know, documentation, reports, right. things like that. So are there any other council comments? So if we decided, and I'm gonna take more comments. So if we'd said, you know what, we've just changed our mind. We're like done with chickens. We don't wanna do chickens. I can call for the best way because we went through a negative motion the other night and we're not <laughs> doing that again. Okay, so um, that was a planning commission. So what I would do just to let everybody know, not that we're ready to call for motion right now, unless somebody's ready to make a motion that I would call for a motion to adopt it. And if there was no, if no one made the motion, it would die. Someone made the motion, didn't second it, it would die. Somebody made it and second it and, and it was voted down, it would die. So just letting you know that that's how this would go, if that's how you want it to go. So having said that, I wanna open the floor for additional comments or a motion, depending on where you, where people feel we are. Any other comments? 
from council. And we are on, this is just the keeping of chickens. Are we allowing chickens or not chickens? If no one else has a comment online, um, I think I'd be open to supporting a hundred foot setback because it's a nice test case where the more rural or you call it a state properties that we could see how it goes and then we could later adopt it but at the 50 i can't accept that i think it's too much too soon with too you know too little enforcement so i would rather kill the whole thing to, than to start over <laughs> We spent a lot of money and a lot of time on this, and um, I'm not will. I, I I don't support starting over. Any other any other comments, Councilmember Clonin? Uh, I agree with President Zachary. Um, I think this this needs to end here this evening. Um, there has been many discussions, many professionals brought in, lots of research by. RJ and many other individuals on this subject matter. Um, we did, in fact, discuss the 100 feet several, I'm not sure if it was last year before um, Council Mem Member Tarl came on uh, board with us or not. But, um, you know, I also agree that I do not want to see this become a burden to our staff. Um, we have a lot of things moving forward in McCandless, and I would hate for, for you know, the inspection of chickens to be a problem at the town level. But I do think we need to remind ourselves that out of the folks that say they want chickens, you know, it is a small number. Um, you know, there's nothing saying that you have to have chickens either in this town. So you don't want them, your neighbor doesn't want them, your other neighbor doesn't want them, you don't have to have them. Um, this is giving those property owners the right to have chickens if they want them. Um, with, you know, with reservation, with some rules, with some respecting of the neighbors involved. And um, I do think folks will self-report or report if there is a nuisance. Um, I'm always surprised to see the number of um, bagster complaints on our, um, on our, our, our charts every month. Um, so I do hope that the, those folks who do decide if this does go through to have chickens, we'll understand that this is, um, you know, something that like everything else, being a good neighbor is going to be the essential part of this um, success of this program. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Councilmember Smith. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I agree with Councilmember Clunan. Um, you know, just my general view of things is less restrictions the better that's if you own your property you own your property and i know there has to be some restrictions but that's just my general kind of view of it um and i know we did have a lot of discussion on on the uh um on the setbacks because i i was originally you know trying to push like a 25 or 32 or 35 foot setback and that 50 was kind of a a number um you know that took a long time to get to but i understand anybody's reservations with it. Um, I think, however, people are willing to decide, for me at least, um, I, I, I think we just have to decide. The, this thing's been going on for a couple of years and I'll respect anybody's decision on it, whether it's a yay or nay, um, but I agree with, with President Zachary that I think we just have to decide and put it to bed one way or another. Either it's gonna happen or it's not. and it's already dragged out for two years. Whatever the answer is, let's just give our citizens the answer. Are you making a motion, Council Member Smith? With that in mind, <laughs> uh, as long as I'm not stepping on anybody else's toes for more comments, I would move to adopt ordinance number 1515, an ordinance of the town of McCandless County, uh, the town of McCandless County of Allegheny, Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, amending the codified ordinances of the town of McCandless at part 13, the zoning code, to regulate the keeping of chickens. Is there a second? Second. Okay. All right, last chance for a dis comment or discussion before this vote. 
All right. All those in favor of the keeping of chickens in McCandless, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. 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 Roll call vote. Board two. Nay. Board three. Nay. Board four. Aye. Board five. Aye. Board six. Aye. Board seven. Aye. Board one. Nay. Motion passes. Okay. All right. Now we are. Oh, I have to get a motion to untable. Well, detail. two options. You could do that, or you could, we could discuss the revisions and come back in two weeks. I, I would ask for advice as to when we should start issuing chicken permits if we don't do the nuisance ordinance portion this time, because that has some of the aesthetic standards for the zoning side. Um, I, I think what our solicitor may be suggesting is that a little more time to look at this we had it um, a couple of days. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. And um, there would be no issuing of anything until this was in place. Correct. Correct. Okay. So got my merchant orders on that. Then. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And then um, how about we leave this tabled and put it back on the next meeting? Seven twenty-six. Seven twenty-six. Head nods for that. Okay. Good. We can talk about this some more. Okay. Good. All Here. right. So. Um, uh, a and old business is tabled till next meeting. B passed. And now we are to C. Um, RJ, are you going to handle that? Is that you? Uh, well, or I no? think that we have a couple people from the applicants group here. Um, I didn't really have anything additional to add to the last discussion. Okay. I right. think that everyone still has everything in their packet. Right. Okay. Um, so we well we we had the letter we've had the presentation okay, okay. so um, is there any questions about this? Okay. Oh. Okay. Is there a motion, uh, Councilmember Smith? I'm sorry. Oh, I was I was just going to ask. Uh, you know, we've heard about the slope there and and things like that. Uh, they have has anyone gone out to to physically look at it? I've been out of town. I haven't been able to. Um, I have. I have. I've, I've walked it. And how? Councilmember Woods has. Councilmember Sponhouse has. Okay, so I'd just like to hear whatever uh, either you know, whatever your impressions are, or you know, if it's obvious in in the discussion we'll have, then then it will be. <laughs> So just because I haven't been able to look at it myself, I'm just trying to get a, a good mental picture of, you know, is, is it really uh, kind of impossible and pointless to do or um, or is there going to be utility in the future if we can connect it? The um, engineers, I think, did address that um, in their letter. <coughs> about the slope and about the ability to put a sidewalk there. I can't, I'm trying to find my document to pull it up. Um, yeah, because the I saw that the engineers said the topography along the roadway is very steep and no other sidewalks currently exist, but that was kind of the extent of it. I, I think maybe I missed something else. Typically, the engineers don't make recommendations, yay or nay, on the modifications, just state the facts. Yeah, because I mean, you know, I wouldn't want somebody to have to build a sidewalk that really is to nowhere. Um, so I guess I'm just trying to figure out would it really be a sidewalk to nowhere? Um, that's my, you know, that's just my concern uh, is. The sidewalks are important. If it's going to end up being pointless, no matter what happens, then I would would hate to require it. But if it could be connected, um, because you know, we we want to have the connection. If it's feasible and it could be done, then I would prefer it be done. Are there the uh, council member Swagger? Um, 
I was just, I would like to point out that I've noticed in years past, um, just for example, there was two properties on LaGrand Drive, one that had not been developed, it's being developed right now, and it's had been over 28 years where there uh, was land, sidewalks that went to that land, had not been developed, but now there's finally a sidewalk to somewhere instead of nowhere. So, um, you know, that's common throughout the town where you'll see a sidewalk, but eventually a sidewalk could be built, you know, connecting to wherever that might go. Um, and I've, I've definitely seen in other situations where people, you know, again, there's no sidewalk, but eventually a sidewalk will be built. And we can't just think of the right now, but down the future and what our goal is, you know, for the town and connectivity. And um, in my opinion, I, I, I feel that a sidewalk should be there. That's it. All right. Um. If there aren't, well, of course, we have another chance for comments. Is there a motion to approve or deny this modification of pool construction? I'll make a motion. Councilmember Sponhouse? I move to deny the modification request of pool construction LLC to waive the requirements to install sidewalk in accordance with section 1313.17 of the town code of or ordinances. Is there a second? Second. Councilmember Swagger. Okay. Any other any additional comments? Can a sidewalk truly be built there? Whoever. They engineered it. Yeah. They just don't want to pay for it. Okay. <laughs> any other any other additional comments? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor of denying, denying the modification for a sidewalk, which means there will be a sidewalk, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion carries. Madam President, I, I abstained. Uh, just because I didn't want to vote without having looked at it. So I just wanted to note that I abstained on that. Is that a reason to abstain? You could abstain for any reason. Okay. All right. Um, all right. The second modification that is requested is a modification for a three to one slope to a two to one slope. Are there any comments or questions on this? I would comment that I think that's a reasonable request based upon the, um, the review of our, um, our town engineer and the geotechnical work that was provided. I would agree with council member Sponholz. Any other comments? Okay. Um, would someone like to, I'm calling for a motion. Uh, council member Clunin. Move to approve the modification request for pole construction LLC for a modification of the fill slope grading requirement under section 1705.05A of the town code of ordinances from a minimum of three to one slope to two to one slope. Second. Council. Okay. Council Member Schneider. Um, chance for comments? Again, all right. All those in favor of granting this, approving this um, modification from a three to one slope to a two to one slope, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? All right, motion carries. All right, last is um, for the application for the land development of Thompson Run Road. Those were the, we voted on the modifications first and then this would be the plan with the modification that was granted and with the one that was denied. Correct, RJ, did that say uh, that right? Well, so because they will need to engineer the retaining walls for the sidewalk, we actually don't have enough information to approve the development tonight oh, because anything okay. over six feet requires a variance from the zoning hearing board. So we would recommend, staff would recommend table. Yes. And this item until 
the additional work is completed. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. So I need a motion to table. Would you like me to make the motion to table it? The application for the pool construction oh, LLC. Wait, wait. Oh, um, I think it would be fine for Mr. Paul to come to speak. Don Poole, the developer of 8500 Thompson Run Road. I just heard that one councilwoman say we don't want to build it because of the cost. And it can be built. So why can't we approve the plan contingent upon building the sidewalk? If your engineer says it can be done and your council people say it can be done, why can it not be approved tonight with that contingency? It seems like, well, it, I think you have to get a variance. So we could make it pending the approval of the well, variance for get, the zoning if, hearing if board. If we don't get the variance, then we don't go to the project? Um, I don't know how that works. Well, if council conditioned the approval on you receiving your variances and you didn't receive it, then you wouldn't have an approval to move forward and you'd have to come back. My understanding is we have an extension of time. Uh, yes, we're, we're okay. So, yeah, so. No, we're, we're okay. Okay, thank you. Don. You may as well stay up because you may want to address this. The, the council could go ahead and move forward with the approval, knowing that we did, did not approve the waiver. He would be required to build the sidewalk. It would be. Yes. So it would be whatever he needed to do then to. Right. And if he was unable to obtain a variance to get it, then. We would it would come back to council to address in some fashion or not. But in that case, because I don't think it's anyone's desire to hold Mr. Pole up any longer than necessary, that if it was hypothetically we made a motion and council approved his de development subject to the sidewalk and any variances that were required related there too. Mm -hmm then it would simply be a, an administrative matter once he acquired those things and it would never have to come back to council. Right. Um, that's a question, yeah, that's it, not a statement. That is correct, except in a situation where any of the conditions are not met. Right. Right. But, then that would have to come back. But if, if, if Mr. Pohl is able to construct a sidewalk, obtain any variances, et cetera, then council would never see it again. It would just be handled administratively. Right. That's what I'm suggesting yes. would so be the most expedient We would do it without the condition. Proceed. We would just vote it up or down without condition. No, no, if you voted it with conditions, it would it would continue unless the conditions were met and then it may come back to council. Okay. Otherwise, with the condition of constructing the sidewalk, obtaining the appropriate variance, et cetera, if the zoning hearing board grants the variance, then they just continue on okay. and we never see it. If the zoning hearing board were for some reason to say no, then we'd yeah. have to come back we here to the drawing board. Yeah. But I, I agree with we Mr. Approval motion, we need to have a contingent on the entry district order. Correct. All the typical. Okay. That's, that's another question I have. Hasn't the engineer already approved this saying that it, the sidewalk can be built? We don't. We, we, we had provided. Um, we had provided cross sections, um, heights of walls, the width of the sidewalk. We, our engineer provided all that information to the town several months ago. And I know it was reviewed by Gateway. Did they not comment saying that that was possible? Or there's a, I believe there was a letter. They from commented them. that that was part of their review. They commented that the modification request was part of. And they had, they had noted the revised sidewalk plan. Uh, yes. Well, they, they noted the request for the I can go back and check. Your June 29th letter indicates yeah, that. I'd like to have a copy of that letter. They have. You do have. Um, I, I, I think Mr. Powell has a 
a very good point, and that is if we are entertaining, um, my understanding is that our um, engineers said that yes, the sidewalk that with the wall, the sidewalk could be built there um, because we certainly wouldn't vote for a sidewalk to be put in a place where the engineers have said it was impossible to go. That's my understanding. Yes. Yeah. So I. I they yeah. certainly haven't said it's impossible. No, no. They, they, they haven't made that recommendation otherwise. Yeah. Is um, Dan's not on, is he? No. I believe, if I recollect correctly, that I think it was probably in his report that simply stated in reviewing the um, cross sections that were provided that the height of the walls required to construct would require further approvals. And that's what I think, I think that's the only real comment that our town engineer made. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a recommend or can't do it was yes can do it but pointing out that that's how need. I understood that yeah. Yes, it could be done, but it would require this and variance. Well, before before we keep <clears throat> throwing money at this project, a, a question for Council. So if for some reason we don't get a variance to build these six foot or seven foot high walls, whatever they are, um, is then this project dead in the water? Oh, it's not going to be approved. That's premature and speculative. I mean, that's something that council have to consider if those well, facts are presented to it. Development for seven. But we're only proves, we're only council's only considering what's in front of it, and you're you're putting forth a speculative it's issue. One, so. it's, it's one item. But they're, they're not here to vote on. Yeah. Okay. I think I, I guess what you're saying, like the town is saying on one side of the mouth, you can go ahead and do it, but the other side says, well. But you might not be able to if you don't get this. Variance. So it's like well, half of us are saying build the sidewalk, and the other another committee might say don't build the sidewalk because the wall is too high. So and then you're like, well, what do I do? I just want to build my development. Correct. Yeah, sort of encompassing what you're asking. Yes. It does all come back to council, though. That's yes. Ultimately. Yeah. So if if he he would have to go in front of the the. What's the zoning, zoning, hearing zoning hearing board for the yeah. wall height variance. The wall height. If they said no, then we'll come back to council. And we could override that or we could. You, well, not the zoning you hearing can't board. can't override it. But we can say no, you could don't put in the sidewalk. A modification. You could right. reconsider the modification and maybe grant a different modification than is being requested or not at all. So it, it ultimately will come back to council if the variance is not granted. Because that will be a condition of approval that they obtain a variance, they comply with the engineer's review letter, they comply with the engineer's review of the of the wall once it's engineered. So quick question. Um, what, what if we could modify the height of the wall? To keep it under six feet. You wouldn't need a variance then, right? Right. That's right. Correct. Yeah, we could show. I mean, but either way, I mean, gateway would I, have I, to okay you know, that. Council wants a sidewalk. You know, we're agreeing to put a sidewalk in. Standing here right now, we'll put a sidewalk in at whatever cost, I guess. But you know, we need to move forward with the project or let it die. And there, it, my engineer just told me there is a possibility that we could build a wall under six feet to make that work by grading the hillside back a little further. Then I, it seems mm -hmm. like we could pass this, we could vote on this tonight then. Yep, okay. with the same conditions and right, and everything will be administrative. And if there's a snafu, it'll come back to council. Otherwise it'll just proceed. So quick question. That's member Smith. Um, so, if they if uh, if they can go and design a sidewalk with a with a wall less than six feet tall, they still have to get gateways uh, review, but there's no further variance, no further anything. So right. if we vote on it tonight, they can just move forward. Right. Um, if they need a wall that's higher, they have to go to the zoning board. Yep. To, to either get the variance or have it rejected, in which case they come back before us. 
but it, it sounds like the most expedient yeah. thing would be to to vote on it tonight, whether they can move forward. And then if they can do it without the variance, there's no more hurdles to get over. Um, and if they still need the variance, then, you know, they know what they're, they then know what they need to do. Then it's pending approval of the variance. Right. Yep. Well, we, yeah. I, I don't even think the way we do it, we wouldn't even have, oh, I guess, well, no, we would just have to, to vote uh, whether to approve it just without having that. Um, I don't even think we'd have to mention a potential variance in our vote at all, would we? No. No, no you wouldn't. You would just say it conditioned upon, you know, Gateway's review of yes. the sidewalk and any related appurtenances such as the wall. Um, and and our traditional review right. uh, letters and other conditions we place on all of our uh, land development approvals. And that's basically the motion at that point. So I think I just made it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have a second. All right. So, so moved. Would, would someone, okay, so Council Member Smith, you are moving, making that motion? Yes. Okay. And I will, I will take uh, Council Attorney's wording <laughs> yep well, it, as long as it works that's good council member woods was that a second i saw or did you have a comment no that's a second thank you okay all right additional comments or questions all right hearing none all those of for approving this is for approval of this development with all of the stipulations worded by our attorney indicate by saying aye aye, aye. 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 opposed Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Paul. All right, new business. We are appointing some new um, committee members. And um, the way we do this is we have a nominating committee who performs the interviews and makes a recommendation for the um, um, appointments. Uh, council has reviewed the um, applications and also the interviews which are recorded so all council members can uh, can um, can see all the applicants so the the chair of the um, nominating committee when I call for nominations can say that we nominate this person but anyone in council can um, also you know nominate someone else so we're not locked into that person just to let you know but this was just a method that we um, developed to help um, move our um, our interviews along. So the chair of the um, Heritage Center nominating committee would be Council Member Smith. So would you like to make a motion for that appointment? Yes. Um, so we interviewed Donald Faulkner. He applied for the open position. He's actually one of the original volunteers for the Heritage Center. And so I would move to appoint uh, Donald Faulkner Jr. to the FDPC Heritage Center for a term to expire 1231-25. Is there a second? Second. Okay, Council Member Clunan. Okay, any comments? Hearing none, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Congratulations, Mr. Faulkner. All right, the next is the Technology Advisory Committee. The chair of that, the next three are from the uh, Technology um, Advisory Committee and the chair of that is Council Member Woods. Um, so I'm calling for nomination for the first position. I just wanna point out a couple of things. We had six applicants for these three positions. One of them is to complete the unexpired term of Scott Shifkins, who uh, resigned from the committee. Uh, we started off with three applicants for that position. When we realized that the other two were expiring pretty soon after, we decided to open up uh, the interviews for, you consider all six applicants for three positions. So we, they all had a chance to, to get on the committee. So with that being said, this is also gonna be a little bit of a complicated one for our town attorney. Um, the first nomination I'd like to make is for uh, Lamar Williams. So this is, I'm going to start this as a question for the town attorney just to make sure I do it right. Lamar Williams is currently on the planning commission. Yes. Um, he has indicated that he is, he understands that he cannot serve in two 
um, a committee and a commission at the same time. Uh, so this would have to be conditional on his resignation from the planning commission. So could I just make a motion to appoint him conditional on that? Yes, you may. Okay. Uh, so therefore I would make a motion to appoint Lamar Williams to the technology advisory committee for a term to expire June 30th, 2023, conditional on his resignation from the planning commission. I'll second that. Okay. Comments from any council member? Um, all right, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, um, I'm abstaining because I, um, he's on the planning commission and I feel like I need to abstain. Okay. The next one is for a four year term. So I make a motion to appoint Michael Arendt to the Technology Advisory Committee for a term to expire June 30th, 2025. Second. Okay. All right. Um, any comments? All right. All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And for the third seat, I make a motion to appoint Marcy Pearson to the Technology Advisory Committee for a term to expire June 30th, 2025. Um, is there a second? Second that. Okay. All right, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Um, congratulations to those three members. Is there any other new business? All right, hearing none, um, council will meet an executive session in the council chambers to discuss personnel matters uh, following adjournment of this meeting. There will be no further business conducted this evening. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Second. And I'll give Council Member Woods because they kind of did that together. Um, all those in favor of adjourning, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is adjourned. Thank you, everyone.